morning. Welcome to Wesley's channel. This is Wesley and this is Wesley's news. Good morning. Come on, зеркала из полированного металла. В фокусе одного из них находится термопара. О ее температуре можно судить по смещению зайчика зеркального гальванометра. Поместим в фокус второго зеркала пламя. Зайчик значительно смещается. В сосуде дьюара находится жидкий азот. Поместим это массивное тело в фокус зеркала. Зайчик смещается в другую сторону. Установим кусок обычного оконного стекла между телом и зеркалом. Смещение зайчика значительно уменьшилось. Объясните наблюдаемые эффекты. Okay, so let's do a different type of uh, nuclear uh, reaction. So remember when we have this coefficient in front, right? We can make two of them, okay? So just to remind ourselves, let's just put another one of these helium-3 atoms there. So can anybody tell me when we have two small nuclei and they get squished together, what type of nuclear reaction is that? Fusion. This is a fusion, yeah, very good. So this is like what happens in the sun. So again, it's the same thing, right? So we're adding up everything here. So we've got the mass number, total mass of six, total proton number of four. Remember here, that's another two coefficient. Okay, so if you want to, you can put that there if it helps you out. If it doesn't, you don't have to. Okay, so now what do we have? We have two and two. So what are we missing? We're missing four and two. What type of particle is that? That's yeah, an alpha particle, right? So four, two, so that's an alpha one. Okay, so this is a fusion reaction that emits alpha particles.
Hi, I'm Phil Dooley and today I'm chatting with plasma physicist Peter DeVries. Thanks for coming along, Peter. Hello, Phil. Thanks for joining us. Um, what have you brought along with you? Uh, well, this is a Jacob's Ladder. Ah, and what does it do? It makes plasma. It makes plasma, a plasma physicist's favourite toy. So, uh, show me. Yep. Wow. That's pretty easy. Flick of a switch and you've got plasma. That's right. Okay, so what's going on here? Um, well, first of all, you can see these uh, two copper plates. Uh, we apply a very two, uh, high voltage in over them, so there's a difference of about 10,000 volts right. in between the two plates. And that ionizes the air in the small gap at the bottom. Right. And this creates uh, a plasma, an arc, right. uh, and that this arc rises to the top where the gap gets too big in order to sustain the arc. Right. So it starts at the bottom where there's a, a small gap. Mm -hmm. That's right. But why does it go up? Um, because, of course, the, the, the plasma gets hot uh, right. and hot air goes hot up. Hot air rises, yeah. yeah. Okay, Sorry. that's quite obvious, really. Yeah. So is this a lightning strike? Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, only uh, a lightning strike will be, of course, over a much larger distance with mm -hmm. a much higher voltage. Yeah. This is a lightning strike over a very small gap uh, right. with a lower voltage, but in this case still about 10,000 volts. Right, so, uh, so the easiest thing to do obviously would be to get it really close together, is that right? That is what you would think. And therefore if you make the gap too small, it will not work. Uh, if you make the gap too big, it will also not work. Oh, okay, so you've got to get it just right. Just right. But that is not true. Uh, there is an optimum gap. Mm -hmm. What you need is sufficient gap in order to get the ionization process really going. Uh -huh. And that is because people would think that it's really the voltage that yeah. is pulling apart the atoms and the yeah. electrons and the ions in, in opposite directions. But that is not the only process that ionizes the plasma. Each electron is accelerated in the electrical field and collides with the other atoms and creates more uh, ion and electron pairs. Right, so you actually end up with a whole lot of them all flowing together. I mean, I guess that's why yeah. it's such a big, that's more than one electron we can see. Yes, flowing and, 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 and what you get is an avalanche process. Uh -huh. So each electron will create a new electron and those two electrons create four new, three new electrons, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So is this the same thing as goes on inside JET? Um, exactly, not identical, but yeah. very similar. Well, look, can you explain it to me on the diagram over here? Yeah, yeah okay. we can go there. So, where in JET is the gap? Where we, we, we had our spark on the machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what you would think, like JET, as you can see, is a, a torus. Uh -huh. um, and we make the plasma in this toroidal shape, so uh -huh. basically the gap should be infinite because that's where we want to make the plasma. Uh -huh. so we have an infinite gap. Uh, but that is of course not the reality. The, the plasma or the particles are confined by this toroidal magnetic field that we have. Um, but this is not pure toroidal. So the magnetic field lines wobble a little bit and mm -hmm. then in the end they will just go around and around and after several kilometers we just hit the wall. Uh, right. And that is basically the gap we have. So we have a gap of several kilometers. Right, so you must need huge voltages for that, like lightning, you know, millions, yeah. billions of degrees. Yeah, so then that's what you would think, like, uh, but that is not the case because we, we don't do this in air and not mm -hmm. in atmospheric pressure. So the Jacobs ladder needed 10,000 volts for a very small gap. We have a very large gap, but we have not air, we have probably about a million times less pressure than the normal atmospheric pressure in the torus. So mm. we put a very tiny little bit of gas into near vacuum, which is then broken down, so we get this breakdown at uh, only a few volts. So is this to do with the collisions that we were talking about That's before? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it because there's less pressure, it travels further before it collides? Yeah. So the, the, the electrons will collide in this case, instead of several milli, mi micrometers, they will travel several meters before they collide. But right, of course, okay. it also takes several kilometers before the electrons will reach the Go anode, the which is the wall here. Right. So. But you still haven't told me how we actually, wh what, what, what the gap is. Where, where Are there electrodes in here? Because you, you would think, like, if I stick an anode and a cathode in, then I can make the plasma, and I need that. But of course, you only get an arc in between mm. those two points, and you want to get it 
to go around traveling. Yeah. So what we use is transformer action. Uh -huh. So in the middle of this this center column, we have a big coil. Yeah. So there's a coil going around like this with many windings, mm. actually 700 windings, and we apply a very high voltage on this. Yeah. And the secondary winding is nothing else than what you see here. That's the torus. That's the plasma. And so once that's happened, then we've got plasma. We're away. We, we're doing fusion, aren't we? We are almost there. So the, the, the plasma that we get is, is uh, just after the avalanche process, something like 100,000 kiloamps, 100,000 100, amperes. Um, and the temperatures are almost like a million degrees. That's, that's, that's quite hard. cold for a fusion plasma. Uh, from that point we have to further increase the, the plasma current in jet to several million amperes and also uh, the temperature needs to go even higher to something like a hundred million degrees in huh. order to get uh, sustained fusion plasma. Okay, thank you for your time today. That's My been pleasure. very informative. Last time I mentioned to you that charge resides at the surface of solid conductors, but that is not uniformly distributed. Perhaps you remember that, unless it happens to be a sphere. And I want to pursue that today. If I had a solid conductor, which say had this shape, then I'm going to convince you today that right here, the surface charge density will be higher than there, because the curvature is stronger than it is here. We get a discharge into the air, and the reason for that is actually quite simple. If I have an electron here, and this is an electric field, the electron will start to accelerate in this direction. The electron will collide with nitrogen and oxygen molecules in the air, and if the electron has enough kinetic energy to ionize that molecule, then one electron will become two electrons, the original electron plus the electron from the ion. And if these now start to accelerate in this electric field, and if they collide with the molecules, and if they make an ion, then each one will become two electrons, and so you get an avalanche. And this avalanche is an electric breakdown, and you get a spark. When the ions that are formed become neutral again, they produce light. And that's what you see. That's the light that you see in the spark. And so sparks will occur typically at the, at sharp points, at areas where the curvature is strong, whereby the radius is very small. That's why the electric fields are the highest. How strong should the electric field be? Well, we can make a back-on-the-envelope calculation. If you take air of one atmosphere, dry air, at room temperature, then the, the electron, on average, on average, will have to travel about one micron, which is ten to the minus six meters, between the collisions with the molecules. That's just a given on average, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, because it's a random process, of course. To ionize nitrogen, to ionize oxygen, takes energy. To ionize an oxygen molecule takes 12 and a half electron volts, and to ionize nitrogen takes about 15 electron volts. What is an electron volt? Well, an electron volt is a teeny weeny little amount of energy, it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Electron volt is actually a very nice unit of energy. Because once you have an electron at rest and it moves over a potential difference of one volt, it gains in kinetic energy. That's the definition of an electron volt. It gains one electron volt. It's the charge of the electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb, multiplied by one volt, and that gives you then the energy, one electron volt. And so, what it means then, let's assume that this number is ten electron volts. So we, we only want a back on the envelope calculation. So we want the electron to move over a potential difference delta V, which is roughly ten volts, and we want it to do that over a distance delta X, 
which is 10 to the minus 6 meters. That's your one micron, at least not yet. You already hear some cracking noise. That means there are already sparks flying around inside there. It's very hard to avoid. There are always some sharp edges in there that we cannot remove. This is not an ideal instrument. But I still think I will be able to show you some sparks by coming closer. There we go. So what you think is only one spark may well be several like these return strokes the way I described with lightning. Моим друзьям из России и из Украины хочу переказать, что у моего друга доктора Ганса все получилось как надо. Конечно, я не смогу на все вопросы ответить, авторизации у меня нету. Ну, маленький праздник. Сейчас, я думаю, хватит только желания. Доброго желания одного человека, чтобы свергнуть царя. Не нужна армия. Хватит одного немца. Come on, man. Welcome to Wesley's channel. This is Wesley and it's Wesley's News. Come on, man. Come on.